I haven't even sworn in this video till now. Um, let's prepare a little bit of swearing, you fucking piece of. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about the Dirichlet kernel. The kernel from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Here, you know the guy. I hope you know the Kentucky Fried Chicken kernel. So, <laughs> this right here is the Dirichlet kernel of the nth degree. And this right here is basically just a finite Fourier series. So, this right here acts as a little approximation for the Fourier series, just as a little matter of fact, so that you know where this comes from. Okay. And we want to express this right here today in a little bit different manner. So, at first I would like to rewrite this difference of x values right here as, for example, tau. I really don't care how you call it. I'm just going to use tau because it's a really cool letter. So we have n going from negative n to capital N, 1 over 2 times pi, e to the i times n times tau in this case. And what you want to do now? We want to shift the index at first, because we want to use something familiar. How can you shift the index right here? Well, I would like to introduce a little substitution just to make everything clear. Let k be equal to, well, we want to get 0 down here, some index k running from 0. So why not take n plus n? Because if we add n on both sides, we have n plus capital N being equal to 0. So k equal to n plus capital N. Also meaning that, well, this is going to run to 2 times capital N. And what is small n right here? This is nothing but k minus capital N. And now we can plug all of this stuff into here to end up with, well, 1 over 2 pi. I'm going to bring this constant to the outside. A sum running from, well, k equals to 0 to 2 times capital N. e to the i times k minus capital N times tau. I hope you can see where all of this came from. Now we can split this up, use the exponential rules to break this up and put it here, this e to the i times capital N times tau times negative 1. Just break it up, turn it into two exponential functions and bring the one that's not dependent on k to the outside. So we have e to the negative, okay, this is i times capital N times tau over 2 times pi, sum running from k equals to 0 to 2 times capital N, i, uh, e to the i times k times tau. <clears throat> I'm terribly sorry for that. <laughs> okay, so how can we now continue? To make things a little bit more clear, I would like to rename this e to the i times tau as, for example, q. I really don't know. So why not name this q? So let q be equal to e to the i times tau, so that we are going to end up with. Okay, this is now q to the negative n over 2 times pi times the sum running from k equals to 0 to 2 times capital N. Um, yeah, q to the kth power. And this looks way more familiar because this right here is just our well-known geometric series. So this is already quite good in itself. So we are going to get q to negative nth power over 2 times pi. Geometric series tells us that we are going to get 1 minus q to the capital uh, 2 times capital N plus 1 power over 1 minus q. Okay, so this is quite good. Now we have to play around to turn this into something really familiar that we already know about, the sine function. For this purpose I would like to advance this fraction by nothing but q to negative one half power over q to the negative one half power. Why I'm doing this is going to become clear in a second and now we can distribute everything into everything. We are going to get q to the negative capital nth power over 2 times pi and now we are going to get, okay, this is q to the negative one half power minus q to the 2 times n plus one half over q to the negative one half power minus q to the one half power because this is q to the first power, one minus one half is just positive one half. 
Now I want you guys to remember how the sign looks like. So we can represent the sign of x as nothing but e to the i times x minus e to the negative i times x over 2 times i. What happens if we take the sine of y? So taking sine of x over sine of y, what is this going to evaluate to? Well, we have e to the i times x minus e to the negative i times x over 2i. Okay, over the same thing basically just with a y plugged in here. e to the i times y minus e to the negative i times y over 2 times i. And the good thing is those imaginary factors are going to cancel out to just e to the i x minus e to the negative i x over e to the i y minus e to the negative i y. So we nearly have this form. So if you remember this fact about the sign, this right here can be manip man manipulated quite easily. So we can factor out a negative one on both terms to just change the order here and there because we want to get, well, this form right here with the positive exponent and then the negative exponent with a negative sign in between, just like with the sine function. If we factor out the negative one, this is going to become positive right here and those parts negative. And now nothing is going to stop us from distributing this q to the negative nth power into everything. So we are going to end up with 1 over 2 times pi. And also we are going to get, okay, q to the negative n and then this part, this 2n minus n is just going to be positive n. So q to the n plus 1 half power minus, okay, then we have q to the negative n minus one half, factoring out the minus up here is going to give us q to the negative n plus one half. This is already good. So we have those signs right here being different over, well, this part is going to stay how it is, q to the one half power minus q to the negative one half power. Okay, <laughs> this is a lot of input. And now we can plug our definition for q into here. You see, this is how we are going to get those complex exponential functions. So we are going to end up with d n of tau being nothing but. Okay, if we plug our e to the i times tau into here, we are going to get 1 over 2 times pi. And then we have e to the i n plus 1 half times tau and then negative e to the negative i n plus one half times tau. I'm going to get rid of this right here. I'm terribly sorry. Over e to the i one half times tau minus e to the negative i one half times tau. And well, this is just a form that we want to get. Sine of n plus one half times tau over sine of one half times tau. So we get one over two times pi then we have the sine of n plus one half times tau over the sine of tau over two. There was a lot of work. There was quite some work, but we have done it. So we have turned this Dirichlet kernel into a different form right here. And we are actually able to integrate this right here. And it's going to give you a surprising result but we are going to do this in the next video. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. I'm terribly sorry that I stuttered a little bit. I'm so excited when I'm filming stuff. No, um, I just have a sore throat a little bit. I'm just ill all the damn time, but never mind. Um, you know how you can support the channel by the merch I created or support channel on Patreon. And I guess up until the next video, have a kernel day. See ya. I haven't even sworn in this video till now. Um, let's prepare a little bit of swearing, you fucking piece of garbage. Ciao. Lisa, wink mal. Doch, winken. <laughs>
hierher.